So that's given Junos a nice advantage on this defense here because they're going to get a lot of intel that it, you can't necessarily tell as easily from the top whether or not you're seeing like black eyes and stuff like that, uh, especially with the distance. So This is what I've been seeing, a lot more focus on Destroy reading the floor. room. And reading room, yeah. especially. It's... You will fight beyond that. It's you will the take control of the stairs. Map now. Yeah. What is up, bros? And welcome back. And in this video, we are going to be bringing you guys 18 tips. And these tricks are all going to be coming from the amazing match that happened five days ago between Penta Sports and Millennium. Now, this match was crazy competitive. And in the first map on Cafe, we saw Millennium come back from a 0-4 deficit and brought it all the way up to 4-4. Then Penta ended up taking the win with a 6-4 and, and these matches were so epic. And of course Millennium, they won the second map and then Penta took the third map to stay undefeated. And jumping right into it, this first tip is gonna be a way that you can hold an angle all the way from reading room and watch the drop from the skylight. Now from these sneaky lines of sight, you will be able to even get smokes and nitro cells, impact grenades, whatever you may want to throw up here, you can do. One other tip that you could also add in, you could drop some barbed wire over the holes, make it even more hidden. And drop and go for a push into piano, but Yogurt's playing oh. over on A. And I like this double mirror middle. window. Yeah, the, you so can see the I way. have to highlight a mirror window literally every single round. It's, it yeah. really is. A no, no Twitch or anything as well to be able to open that because that yeah. could be really nice crossfire. If you could open both of those. Now, moving on to tip number two, we got a mirror setup. And similar to how there are just so many different types of ways that you can set up mirror on bank downstairs, being on cafe in the top four in the bar back store is kind of similar to that. There's so many different variations. Sometimes you'll have a mirror that's looking west into the bar room, but for this setup, we're actually gonna be boxing ourselves in, and then we're gonna have mirrors that are looking out over onto each bomb site. A bonus tip is that you can shoot out the floor and get a nice angle on anybody coming from reading room downstairs below you, and you also be able to see the doorway that goes into the hallway from reading room. Besides that, you're gonna have the regular rotations to the left of the freezer and to the one that's facing east. One thing to keep in mind is that if they're able to get a Twitch drone in there, they would be able to have a line of sight that goes pretty much all the way across the top four, so be careful of that. For alive and he's not gonna be able to escape oh, but that. do they spot the second player? That's gonna yep. be up to Jonas here to find him, and he will get the second one, though, nice. from the hatch. They'll get, oh, wow. they'll down him, but they won't be able to take him out. So that's definitely going to be a pickup there. You see the Monty coming in. <laughs> Can't get the hit. There's no, not a second impact to throw in. And Pengu will be able to get a res up on Jonas. All right, so taking that previous mirror setup and using that murder hole that we made in the bar back store and combining that with this murder hole that's to the left of the A-bomb inside of the cocktail lounge is so deadly for any attackers that decide to come through the reading room. So from this angle right here, you can see that I am able to ping and shoot all the way to red carpet, all while the attacker, whoever is getting shot at, has a very difficult time seeing this angle. You guys saw they tried to escape through the doorway, but it was too little too late. On in the vector will trade the second one, the second down Goga, but that's not the end of the world. They already used up everything that they needed, but Rise will make one happen, not the second. Shate and of course Pengu on the Monte will push in and get the final kill. That is a pretty sweet Valcam spot, actually. Yeah. Nearly a flawless round. All right, so when you first see this camera, you almost have to take a double take at it because it kind of looks like it's supposed to be part of this coat rack. Now, I know the pros pretty much know every single little spot that each other have, but it's kind of funny because if you just kind of look at Shate's reaction to seeing this camera, it was kind of like he took a double take also. Like he kind of glanced at it and then he was like, wait, what is that a camera? So it's pretty funny how he noticed it after, like during the death cam sequence. And honestly, I'm sure he knew about it before this game, but just looking at that reaction, it was pretty funny because that's what it looked like. Oh yeah, this was the turning point because there's almost never a turning point is always going the way 
of our mixed CEU team. It's uh, fairly odd to look at here, but... All right, now going into this next camera, this may very well be the nuttiest camera that I have ever seen on Cafe Dostoevsky. I cannot wait to get into a game and use this one. So from right here, I'm gonna show you the first method is just straight running out and throwing the camera up. But because you're so low to the ground, it's kind of hard to get the camera all the way up. But one tip you can do is take a vault onto this little square garden bed and from there you're just aiming a little bit above the tree and then from here you will be able to get such an insane angle on top of anybody on the skylight as well as that east side patio and doing runouts on this east side patio is actually very safe. It's very difficult for attackers to get over there really quickly before the defender can escape back in. This is such a well hidden camera for anybody like say blackbeards that like to camp up on the skylight. That is watching this. You can't at least, you know, checking the cameras, realizing you can hear the player that's trying to rope help from yeah. upstairs. At least uh, Vigil playing some smart angles in terms of, or uh, smart spots in terms of moving around on floors so they don't know where he's at and staying alive, backing up Rise here, but some nice opening of mirror windows and then Renshiro with a nice trade on it though, paying the back for that window getting opened. That is Candela's off the board. All right, Braz, so you guys remember that double mirror setup that we did in the beginning of the video inside of the bar back store? Well, here's another way to counter it if you don't have a Twitch drone. So once you clear the second floor, you can actually go into the hallway, which is called the reading room corridor, and you will be able to shoot up, not just from the hole that you create, but if they do create that hole in the ground that watches the reading room door and the inside of reading room, you'll actually be able to shoot up from that exact same hole and take out the mirror. Now from here, if you can get a blackbeard repelling up on a window, he'll have a line of sight through pretty much the entire third floor. It's gonna be very deadly, be sure to keep this one in mind, whether defending or attacking. P section, so there is a ton of time to play around with here for Goga as he sets up. The spray coming in, but he does not have an impact to get a shot through. Two goo mines won't be able to do too much with those, and Goga, see, oh my the, god, the claymore, the claymore set up in the most predictable spot. It's on red stairs. It's red on red, though. You gotta, oh you gotta admit, that is, that is one of the harder to see claymores. That tapestry, 100%, needs to be replaced but at this point. The thing is, though, he was looking up anyway. So he was overly concerned. Well, not, I would say overly, because it is absolutely something you need to be concerned about, is above you right there. When you're walking upstairs, it's very dangerous, but very hard. Now, I don't know if you guys caught that or not, but Goga was able to see that coat rack cam and he was able to take it out. So just wanted to point that out. It's pretty funny to see what it actually looks like in a live game. But anyways, I'm gonna show you guys this amazing Claymore spot. And of course, Claymores on top of staircases are so popular. You guys always gotta keep in mind while flanking especially because people expect it, they place their Claymores. Now, one way that you can sometimes avoid them is you're able to vault over the edge of the staircase and get behind it. But the main idea when placing claymores is that you wanna have the middle wire hidden as well as the one on the sides so that when they approach it, it's just one red trip wire instead of all three. So for this one here, there's actually two showing but because it's on the red staircase, it blends in so well. And this is just such a good Claymore spot. And like we saw in the previous clip, he had to keep his eyes on the top of the stairs because he was gonna get shot, as well as the bomb timer was counting down. So really just stressful situation and hard to deal with the Claymore in that situation. Kill before the start of the round. Now Shante has set up near the big bar here outside of the cigar shop and he sprays Whoa. in. Shots land so very close, close to Renshiro. That was almost damaged as well, but Montaigne says, hello, <laughs> what's up? Jumps what? out, Renshiro what? gets the kill. Jonas will get taken down, and Jogurt is helping out. He can jump oh. back in, and he's going to just rush on in, but Hicks will uh, get the C4 on Goga. Penta have been demolished here by Millennium. Behind, that's for sure, but Renshiro's play, the, absolutely the star of the show right there. Monty pushes him, he says, I'll jump out the window and get a kill while I'm out. <laughs> on the glass. That was on the on Junus. 100% 
a highlight, 100% yeah. a highlight for the week. That definitely. was a heads up play right there because what looks like a suicidal play was actually the, the best thing they could have done and completely turned that around because not only did he avoid the Montaigne getting any progress there in terms of pushing him out, well, I mean, literally pushed him out, but they didn't even get the kill on him as he tried to re-enter the building. All right, so we're pretty much just setting up combos here. I don't know if he had a teammate that was calling out that Glaz was on the balcony outside or what, but he was very prepared for this. It was like almost like he wanted to do it and when Montaigne pushed him, it just gave him a good reason to go ahead and do the YOLO jump out rotation. And like I said earlier, jumping out and doing runouts on this side of the map is actually pretty safe. If they're up on top, they're gonna have to repel, which takes a few seconds to lean over and it's gonna leave them vulnerable at the same time. So don't be afraid to go for some YOLO runouts every once in a while when it's a calculated risk to go for the plant first but he did have to fight too and i understand he was probably just trying to at least trade one down if he could first oh but no these early kills from these teams hicks with a nice kill already onto uh obviously peaking shot day yeah, i know you're a point all right so at the beginning of rounds pre-fires are pretty common and at high levels especially it's it's a pretty standard tactic to avoid spawn kills and it's a huge deterrent to anybody peeking windows so this is a pre-fire that I'm definitely going to be adding into my arsenal. And this is from the back alley spawn. And this is going into the fireplace hall. And we saw them get a very early pick. I'm not sure if the window is broken and maybe he was going for a spawn peek. But regardless, when you spawn back there and then you just climb the ladder onto the rooftop and then run to the right corner in the front, you'll be able to get some really nice angles into the fireplace hall. to happen there's not many spots here for millennium to push through us fabian will get one goga getting a low on hp as he'll get shot just a bit through the hatch in the bathroom Ooh. and a shot from shot to, to clean up yogurt he still has the echo drone to play with here has the mp5 as fabian gets one more spots in Renshiro takes him out and the last well, the Yogurt still will refrag. Goga now out of play and that's the diffuser on the floor that wow. is a huge frag yogurt with another one headshot with the bandit all right, so this corner when defending inside of the garage on consulate is kind of my new standard place that I like to go. Instead of going behind and looking through a little pixel peek behind the white van or the black car, I've actually found it better to just crouch in this corner and from here you can watch the drop down and also you can do really, really fast crouch up peeks on anybody coming down from the yellow stairs. Now you are gonna have to be careful of the drone hole if anybody's outside. And of course, if they start to open up the garage, you need to be a little bit more careful. But if you're able to deny that and force people to come down the yellow stairs, this spot is absolutely deadly. And you guys saw some really good examples in the previous clips from the highest level of games with two of the best teams in the world. And don't forget that any attackers coming down yellow stairs, they have so many places to check. Now, if somebody crouching and doing fast crouch up peaks is just gonna add to the stress for them. This floor very quickly now opening the hatches. Hopefully go get a good be working on that door as well. I like when they use that second one there for that angle so you could fight down the hatch a little safer. Get a better angle on it. And at least charge. Here it going off now. That is garage open. Oh no! Finds Hicks on the rotation. All right, so this right here is a really great trick for any Habana players when attacking the garage on consulate. Now, instead of just popping the hatch, we're also gonna be popping the wall so that we can be in west quarter and look south along the backside of the white van. Now, as a defender, once this hatch gets opened, normally people just assume it's not safe to be on the north side and directly under it. Most people still rotate around the south because normally there's not an opening. But with this Habana murder hole, we're creating a line of sight that's going to make it very dangerous for anybody rotating around inside of the garage. Paying off. Oh, I love this. They're not expecting the open hole on the side. Yeah. And obviously, since he's the visual, well, he can't really be spotted. Oh. Unfortunately here for Fabian, he will. And he will go down. They Shot know it. he's playing around there. Yeah, he's holed up behind a reinforced wall. And I like how they have set up these walls. The two breaching rounds left. Liffin oh. will spray right next to Pengu and finally will get the frag. They're still waiting and possibly the vigil peeking out for it. So here's Shate maneuvering behind the Oh, they know wall. he's there now. 
They, they want to force him out, and maybe it'll be time for the grenade to be thrown in for Rise. Yep. All right, now I absolutely love this one because this murder hole slash kind of rotation, if you really need to be, is so obvious. But what this does is it kind of cuts off that little safe zone that so many attackers kind of build up on when approaching on the yellow stairs. Now, when you're defending on the third floor, it's very common for attackers to be coming up and pushing the yellow stairs. But from here, as soon as I hit about this location here, I'm going to be vulnerable to anybody leaning out from the offices from this giant impact hole. This also creates kind of a cluster because normally people back up on the yellow stairs and the only safe zone now is going to be directly behind the wall on the north side of yellow. If anybody ever pokes down and starts to retreat, they're going to be even more vulnerable. So what this does is this creates just a giant havoc on the yellow stairs. I can't wait to use this the next time I play consulate. Throw but he can also play him very, very, very far away. Ooh, some interesting angles from the uh, long desk. Usually there. you'll only see a close angle that's right here above the lobby entrance. Yeah, from projector. Yeah, exactly there in projector room. But here we see two wider angles that'll give them even more spots. This is These are four angles that can be used down Well, the chat's with ACOG lobby. as well, as long as he doesn't somehow stick his feet out too much or have an issue with uh, the, uh, the other door. All right, so the general spot for when you defend the lobby is right behind this table. You can pop a hole right here and watch the main entrance doorway. But instead of doing that very common one that so many people will just pre-fire, we're gonna be going directly over the door and then we're also gonna be going back over here by the main stairs or the spiral stairs. And you can actually break this floor, which honestly I didn't realize that you could pop this floor right here. So made me feel kind of dumb, but that just shows how cool Siege is and why so many people keep coming back to it is that I've been playing this game since literally day one that it launched and there's still brand new things that even me and so many people, even pros are learning. And anybody approaching this angle, look, now there's like five, six different murder holes that all lead to the main door. And one tip is you can actually use a castle and kind of block the windows in the back, keep you a little bit extra safe. In the spot kitchen here, getting some information. This is where he has taken control of the Sunrise Bar, opening things up for Wrencher to have an angle, a cross angle really, into the back of the kitchen. The first E1D will get popped, and the fairly early one, a lot of teams have been very conservative. All right, so similar to that last tip on Consulate, from the theater on Coastline, we're going to be watching the main entrance that enters the lobby. And what's really cool about certain angles from here is that you can create those types of lines of sights where you will be able to see their feet before they're able to see you, just based on the angle and what is blocking. So you'll be able to see right here that you can see the bullet holes in the floor right here. And when I stand up, I can't see the murder hole that I was able to shoot through. I can't even see it when I crouch. I can only see it when I lie down. So any attackers approaching this angle, they're not gonna have to just look up to watch the angles, but also all around them, gonna be very dangerous. For example, um, since they are much more keen on bringing a blitz, that they will challenge the main door to push into the bar, but Definitely not the case here in, in Europe, as it's, it's going to be a lot more um, laid back. Take your time, take control of the top side, uh, maybe try to push. All right, now I absolutely love tips like this because this is one of those tips where if you just blinked, you may have missed it. So you got to be paying really close attention. A couple different ways you can throw this camera out, one from the top of hookah and one from below, but I find the one from the below window much more difficult. So I recommend just doing it from the hookah window. Now from here, what you're aiming to do is getting the Valkyrie camera in between these two little metal grates so that you can see the north balcony as well as that west side balcony outside of hookah and you'll have so much coverage. Now, if you aim this camera a little bit too low, you won't be able to see the north balcony. So it takes a little bit of practice, but you will definitely get it down. The bedroom and VIP window. Turn there. Okay, 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 it's just an odd angle. All right, so everything is reinforced, and they only leave out one side here for Pengu. Ooh, Jonas, Jesus. though, will get the kill on Hicks, so it's a very oh, good... Oh, and the right by the Lamborghini too. there, nicely done. Yep. Hicks will go down 
unfortunately not going to be taken out for the test drive. All right, so I believe everybody remembers when Canadian did that amazing spawn peek from the very common window outside of Hookah into the pool, and that happened in the finals games against Penta in the six Invitational. Now, the point of this clip right here is just to show at the highest levels of play, sometimes the really obvious spawn peaks work, and this one is one that Dansom always goes for, at least that I notice, and he gets a lot of kills from this spot, and keep in mind, he is a diamond player. So this one right here is just looking out this kind of yellow Lamborghini car as well as you can watch the right of the window too and that's going to be around the front of the armored truck and if they make it past you they're going to be approaching that lobby where they're going to have to watch out for all those theater murder holes putting those traps there Yes, the, the, the welcome maps are, welcome mats are very effective. The C1 is extremely easy to control as well that'll give you uh, a lot of the C1 already set up Fabian in general. He's still got one more welcome mat to play with. And this is a Ooh. sneaky one. A lot of people like to play behind the main lobby. The welcome mat at the desk. welcome desk. Okay, so not only when you use Frost, you got to keep in mind, you can virtually have no recoil because Frost's gun is just so easy to control. But we saw two really, really sneaky Frost mats on coastline and I cannot wait to give them a try. Now he was able to pull off some massive damage with Frost and this first trap is gonna be behind the desk on server entrance. And this one's great because when people enter from service entrance, they generally aren't gonna wanna just run straight down because that's gonna put them in the line of fire. A lot of times anybody that enters this is gonna instantly vault over the desk and most of the time you will have a rotate hole right there. So you're kind of anticipating where they're gonna be moving and they're gonna be trying to be like all oh, parkour, hardcore, and you're gonna have a trap waiting and ready for them. The second spot for the frost mat is gonna be behind the desk in the main lobby. And man, we got a trifecta going on of damage for anybody entering the main lobby. They're gonna to have to avoid the spawn kill approaching it. They're gonna to have to avoid the murder holes above it. And then if they get in, if they happen to vault over, they're gonna be absolute history. And it blends in, of course, so well with the floors here. Definitely for all the frost mains, I absolutely love this trick because I don't feel like there's a total ton of them. So be sure to try these spots out. You're not gonna, top of the leaderboard MVP doesn't matter unless your team wins. Exactly. So looks like he's gonna cook up a goo mine just to make it extra tasty if they get into that kitchen. All right, now I absolutely love this spot also. Not only does the shadow really blend in with the utensils and pots and everything going on with the stove and tools, but this is kind of similar to how we were using Frost is when we're really anticipating areas where attackers are gonna go and they're not gonna really have time to slow down. They're gonna be just pushing forward. And imagine if you vault over and you're in the heat of battle right now in between these two bomb sites, you got a goo mine up your butt. You're totally screwed, man. I really wanna keep those in mind. Next time I play Legion, I'm gonna start using them in places that are really common to vault over. I think that that is really ingenious. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys liked this video. It took me quite a while to do this one. This is a very long video, 18 tips total in this Pro League Tips video. Let me know what your guys' favorite one was. And of course, as always, I love you guys all. I'll see you guys all very soon in the next video. I hope you guys all have an awesome week. I love you all. Peace.